You are listening to High School Five and Where real talk is our vernacular. All right. Um, well, let's get back on course. So, uh, so Joshua, it was a beautiful wide woman that spurred your. Wow. wow. <laughs> see, see, this is the kind of shit we go to, motherfuckers. You, you get, you throw them a bone, and they, they hear titties or something like that are white women. I and, didn't say anything. I was quiet the whole time. Nigga, you started know breaking down. You started breaking. <laughs> you went to the. Jason asked me a question. Aaron, you announced your periodic tables of titty types, <laughs> which is all of them. No, so I didn't say anything about white women, about breasts, nothing, until Jason asked their, asked me a question, and I answered the shit. I'm not gonna answer. Half ass, I'm answering all the way. I don't know why. Uh, uh, well, anyway, I was quiet that whole hilarious. time. Your periodic table was quite extensive. That's all I'm gonna say. You know that. Talk about inverted nipples. I ain't never heard of an inverted nipple until Aaron decided to go on his long ass periodic uh, titty table. Put that, put, that, put that on Twitter and see how many people respond that they've been people inverted nipples. <laughs> you gotta go out and date more, Jerry. <laughs> I know Pedro and Jason ain't got nothing to do. No, I got I got, I got things. I got the guard. I got things to do too, Jared. What you got to do, Pedro? You ain't got shit to do, man. Shoot, I got I gotta I gotta cut my toenails. <laughs> <laughs> That's important though. That's hey, you important. know you know what? You know, Pedro, that is important because it starts it, it starts turning up your uh your your, your socks. You don't want to be month. having to buy socks you every every month. <laughs> Jared, I got the you dick toner, socks, your, your toenails get your toenails get harder. They get denser. They get denser and they start tearing up your toe your your your, your seat sheets and your sock. <laughs> I have no nice idea that, but <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. All right. Well, I wear it for Darius because Darius got them uh, peanut brittle toenails. His toenails look like they might give you diabetes if you were to accidentally eat one of them. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a lot of things need to go wrong. <laughs> it's like, man, you get that. His toenails look like you know the top of that. Uh, you know the Mexican dessert, the little flan. They got the little caramelized, you know, shell on top mm-hmm. of that. That's what his toenails look like. That you know, caramelized, burnt, dark. <laughs> uh. <laughs> he's basically, basically saying that Darius got poor nutrition. That's what he's like. he's, <laughs> I don't know. He's 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 like pretty much vegan though. Like, them toenails is that's a that's hereditary. That's not nutrition. <laughs> yeah, t- telling me that I'm going to be the fly on the wall. So that means I got to eat shit all day. I didn't. You know what, Jason? You you calling me like this is a Miss Cleo's hotline podcast, and that's not what we doing here, player player. <laughs> like, hey, hey, hey. Y'all got openings today? <laughs> like, Negro, <laughs> are you ready to pay the tour line? Jared, Jared up there looking like Goku, not Super Saiyan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I've been waiting to say that for like almost two weeks now, Jared. What, call me Goku? Yeah. You can call me Goku? <laughs> Go, <laughs> go, <cool. laughs> I, like, I feel like Jason Good's gonna be our sound bite, sound bite this week. Hey, hey, Brandon, don't use my, my my government name like Aaron. You can call me a uh, 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 um, uh, Dual Shock O Five. I, I can't call you that because uh, I know what you use Dual Shock O Five for. <laughs> I'm not trying to be link. I'm not trying to be linked to those things. <laughs> Your name Dual Shock 05 had me talking to to your woman one time late at night trying to calm her down. Like oh, oh lying talking about that was my nickname. Oh, that's my nickname. He just, you know, I'm sorry, it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> that's the last day I'm calling you what your mama called you. Mama called him Clay. I'm calling him Clay. <laughs> Oh, there go, sure. Pedro. And, yeah, and I'm, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to set up my home studio. His home studio <laughs> looked like his wife's closet or his mom's closet. Hey, man, that, that's that's some real yeah. good dampening effect right there. I know you ain't gonna have no echo in there. Uh, nope. Uh, I got my. I I don't have my phone for my soundproofing. 
So I do got oh this big God. box of fruit snacks. Uh, I have a skin box. <laughs> for sure. You got that at Costco or Walgreens? Yeah, uh, one of them. And then I got some diet soda. See, now you know. <laughs> he can tell Pedro oh, no, got kids because he yeah. keep all the good snacks in the closet. Right. <laughs> I got kids and grandkids, and I got these set of Nikes that I never wore before. <laughs> And that's where he hides the snacks inside the Nikes until one of the grandkids get get their feet big enough. <laughs> See, I, I never understood that because my brother has kids that are like te- were teenagers, and I was like, "Oh man, you got anything to eat?" He's like, "Oh, what you want?" He's like, oh, "We got chips. We got you know this or that." I was like, "Oh yeah, man, I'll take some chips." And he goes like, "Let me, I'll be back." He goes up to his bedroom. I was like, "Where do you keep all the food in there?" He's like, "If, it, if I don't put it in there, it's gonna be gone." <laughs> that's how we ration it out. You you have to do that because you know you know you know I got Sebastian here, so he 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 goes to his room and he he, he stuff shit. So he got grapes, he got uh, everything in his room is all stuffed away. We have to hide the shit. We have to hide snacks. Sound like he hiding shit from you? Like you be walking in his room trying to get the good stuff? Yeah, like he still ain't taught you how to put your damn screen on so you see your face, Negro. He's trying to hide. That's why he's dual shot. What I do wrong? You ain't got no uh, screen on right now. You just got your. Hold on, hold on. Let me see. see. Hit the camera. Yeah. Yeah, Jason probably on the original iMac, the original Mac computer with no camera on. (laughs) (laughs) He ain't got no camera on that Uh, and a flip phone. He using the old school Razor phone. That's why we can't hear him well. Go get your nine year old who's a (laughs) hacker. He'll teach you how to use your computer properly. Oh, you, you know what? I'm using my phone right now. You can still... That, there's more reason to have a screen on that motherfucker. Hold on. I, I, I did it. You, you know what? I using my Blackberry with. touch. That, see, I was just about to say that, Brandon. <laughs> so you get the first Blackberry with the ball in the middle. I remember they sold me on that phone. It was like, hey, man, you got to mess with this new track phone. This new track ball. You know all the features. And you press it right here. It's just like the internet. Feel just like, like a computer pro- at home. You playing golden tea on your phone? No, you, you know what the problem is. <laughs> the problem is I, I wear contacts, but my contacts don't got the bifocals on there, so I can't see a damn thing because it's for distance. <laughs> so I can't see my phone unless I take my contacts out. Jason over here talking about. So what the hell that got to do with your <laughs> camera? Jay, Jason over here talking, <laughs> talking about his camera supposed to be his, or his, his cash supposed to be coming in on the fifteenth. It's supposed to be here on the fifteenth. <laughs> <laughs> don't know how to use a goddamn smartphone. All right, well let's uh, let's get ready to start the show. Uh, uh, Josh, I need a letter. Uh, let's go with K. K. Cucamonga King Killers. King Coon Killers. Wait, what was the name of my fly, uh, my fantasy football team? What's Losers. No. <laughs> That's an L, Jared. That's an L. That's not a K. What? Losers? <laughs> oh, yeah. King Coon Killers. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to the High Score 510 podcast. You can catch us at High Score 510 on the dot com, the Twitter, Instagram, and the YouTube. You can also email the show at highscore510.fans at gmail.com. And we are here with. This is Aaron Grayson the third, also known as AG3, coming at you faster than Colonel Sanders running to get the whip after Aunt Sarah Burns the chicken. Give us a three. And we are also here with <laughs> what's going on? This is Brandon, aka Taco Pablo, spinning in circles like Starbucks on Black Lives Matter. Hey girl, you gonna eat your cornbread? Mm-hmm. Oh, Trevor. Don't say not that. No, not, not at all. Um, I want you to have it. Hey, no, I ain't good. Don't, don't pass your cornbread to him. For that's your cornbread. Ray, I'm a grown man. Okay, I'm not gonna eat this cornbread if he wants the cornbread. Damn it! Have the cornbread. Now, if he wants some cornbread, let him go up to the front and get his own portion of cornbread. That's your cornbread. Fuck him. Hey, man, he gonna eat his cornbread. All right. Fuck you. I don't. I don't need you to to, to take up for me. I'm all right. I'm a, I'm a grown man. I can handle it. If you that. let him have your cornbread, you're gonna be adding his drawers and clipping his toenail. <laughs> And we are also here with... Hello, everyone. It's your friendly captain, Captain P. Funk, Lando's cousin, a.k.a. a free slave. You were in charge of the fight. You were aggressive and trying and taking advantage of what you, know you what saw I'm, You know what I'm going to do? Because you don't ever give me a face shake. You know that? So I'm going to let you talk to Victor Ortiz, all right? I'm through. They put somebody else up and give me an interview. What talk are you Victor talking Ortiz. about? What you, are you, you talking heard about? Him. You never give me a face shake. HBO needs to fire you. You don't know shit about boxing. 
You ain't shit. You're, you got shit. I wish I was 50 years younger you and I'd kick care. your ass. You won't do shit. <laughs> that, was one, that, that was one of my favorite post-fight interviews of all time. <laughs> that shit was hilarious. We're also here with uh, our fly on the wall, Jason. Jason, would you like to introduce yourself? I'm a fly on the wall, eating shit. You know, you know, flies eat shit. Uh, Jay Good six nine, aka Dual Shock oh six. And um, I'm out here. Oh six or oh five? Which one is it? <laughs> Wait a minute, that's what I was about to say. He had, had to change. He, he had to change it up after Aaron had that talk. <laughs> it's, it's the old, it's the old five, oh six year, you know. But it's like the basketball season, man. <laughs> it came out in oh five, but it was for oh six. Yeah, the championship run <laughs> wasn't to 06, but the season started hey, in 05. I, I, I haven't used it since I got in trouble. Here's your sound bite, Jason. Listen, be quiet, bitch. You know nothing. Can you be quiet one time? Yes. <laughs> okay, now you gonna give him that sound bite for the worst pit. Be quiet one time and listen. Worst pit ever, Jared. And I'm gonna Come let on. you know why you threw up. Oh, Jared. I done taught you everything else you know about this shit, right? Yeah. And about how you know how to just live, period. Yeah. Okay, then. So then listen. Okay. God damn. That's all the fuck you got to do. I know you got a little intoxicated, but you don't need to keep running your mouth, man. Okay. Rest in peace to RP. RP from American Kids. Rest, rest in peace. Hey, hey Jerry, that, that, that was some, that's, you, you keep me giving me some deep ass shit. I, I'm going to set my game up. <laughs> <laughs> All you gotta do to do that, J- uh, Jason, is somehow figure out how to get your damn camera on. That's the problem. yeah, yeah. You get whatever you are at the discretion of your masters. <laughs> you ain't got far to go. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's like <laughs> I think there's only three buttons you can actually push on your screen right now, and one of them you has to do what? with turning on your monitor. You know what? <laughs> Fuck for all y'all. <laughs> all right. I'm working right. on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Right. I'm gonna go have to have my nine year old show me how to do this shit. Listen, be quiet, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fucking hilarious! <laughs> all right, and we are also here with uh, a special guest today, uh, Joshua Self, Self Shoes from the Hip. Happy to be here. I just want to know why does Starbucks taste like oppression? <laughs> man, man, they're using that. It's, it's, it's like it's like it's like church's chicken. They use that slave ingredients, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got the high fructose uh, uh, squ- squeeze pumps. That's what they got. This, this, hey. That's that's the new age whip. It's called diabetes. Me and Pedro hey. feel it on our backs. Hey, Starbucks. The Kool-Aid of coffee. This isn't stained by someone in Minneapolis. It's still got a shine on it. And so do theirs. So do theirs. Stop treating us like animals and thugs and start treating us with some respect. That's what we're here today to say. We've been left out of the conversation. We've been vilified. It's disgusting. What was that it's from? Like animals and thugs. <laughs> that that's, that. your, that's your police union chief of New York City. <laughs> yeah. Trying to try, trying to represent the, the mistreatment of police officers. <laughs> that's just crazy. <laughs> he said he said all all the things that black people have been saying for years. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like two weeks later, this is this is unbearable. <laughs> I can't live with this. What are y'all talking? <laughs> it's like, what do you? Wait, we live with this every day, motherfucker. Some of those memes on uh, Instagram, they're how they have their work safety uh, posters and like grocery stores or whatever. It's like basically like cops have gone zero days without shooting down or black man. Well, they, they gotta go back to they gotta go back to zero after last night. It's like, oh shit, we gotta reset that calendar, yeah. motherfuckers. <laughs> and my name oh. is Jared, aka DJ Art, with two T's for a double dose of that tink tink. The quarantine is out now. Get some to, so you can rub it on your back or your toenails. Um, the D is silent, so it's just Jart. Right. Maybe I ought to eat your cornbread. Oh, oh motherfucker, you can't have my cornbread. That's for damn sure. Because if you try to take my cornbread, part two of my killing spree going to begin up in here on your ass right now. If you think about my cornbread, they get the taste out your mouth. That's for damn sure. Now, fuck him. Fuck that. Because I'm from New York City, goddammit. 
Nobody take no cornbread from me. And that go for you and any other you motherfucking farmers want to try some shit. You fuck around with me, it's going to be consequences and repercussions. Hey, Garrett, I, 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 think you, I, I think you need some good cornbread. I, I can make you a good cornbread. You can make me a good... Man, I made some cornbread muffins with my mom last week that were pretty bomb. It was like a jalapeno bacon and a fresh corn cornbread. And you probably used Jiffy. <laughs> Joshua, you're from Tennessee, but uh, tell us a little about yourself and uh, uh, you know where you're from and, and just a little bit about uh, your show. Uh, from Memphis, Tennessee, uh, host of the show Self Shoots from the Hip, uh, where I talk about black culture, pop culture, and that great stuff in between. We're just happy to be here. I feel like the uh, the Cinderella team, you know, I'm just... I'm here, yes. <laughs> I didn't deserve it, but I made it somehow. Are you part of the crew today? You part of the crew today, so you know, welcome. Um, and then, uh, what is it that got you into podcast? I just want to, you know, a lot of people like what, what what made you like start your podcast, and uh, yeah, what inspired you to to get on that that platform for yourself? So originally, like, um, there was a lot of things that were happening, like police uh, being called on black people for basically no reason, like oh, you're sleeping in the dorm room or whatever. Hey, let's call the police on you. And the uh, woman I was dating at the time was a white woman. And not being able to talk to her about that, you know, someone that um, you know, I spent a lot of time with or whatever. And so I wanted to be able to have these conversations. So I started a podcast and invited my friends on um, so we could talk about things that were going on. So, so, so you were you were dating a beautiful white woman at the time. I, I was yes. at the time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> was, it, was the neck of that sweet? No, so it was it in a, in a conspiracy brother, or was it an undercover brother when they was like he she was with a white woman? <laughs> she everything I dreamed of. She, everything I drink were her nipples pink. <laughs> no, they're, they're brown. <laughs> Don't you worry, hey. <laughs> That's what Dave Chappelle said. <laughs> right, right, right. They're, they're, they're brown though. They're, okay, so oh, so she had a little, she had a little color to her. Is every woman, white woman's titties nipples a uh, pink? <laughs> I don't know. I, I've seen I a think Shock has a bigger sample size than anyone else here. So. <laughs> yeah. Dual Shock 05. Can you tell oh, them? Wow, you're asking us. <laughs> uh, if y'all don't know, uh, Brandon and Jason are uh, both have. I got a hashtag whoop wake wife. <laughs> no, I, I, you know what? I, 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 I have a problem with nipples. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I don't care about the ass or anything like that, but the nipples, they got to be on point. If not, I ain't fucking with you. Well, well I mean, Wait, how, how, that's not how, something you can figure it out on the first date or Right, exactly. That's what I was going to say. How far along? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't for, figure that out on the first date. I've, I've had plenty of white women show me their nipples on the first date. He took a white to that show. That's introduction. Hey, what, why, 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 I'm a beautiful white why, woman. Why <laughs> women nipples be on hit? For some reason, I don't know what they did. <laughs> you realize that these they don't come in one standard pair, Jason. Right? <laughs> there's no, there's, it's not like there's a stencil for certain races and how they look. I mean, it, trust me, and this is coming from a person that stereotypes a lot. Even you got me caught up. Like, wait, hold on, Jason. <laughs> I, so I heard that white women's nipples taste like Laffy Taffy. Is that true? <laughs> That's pretty accurate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> that's the kind of shit. That's the kind of shit that's gonna get this movement pushed backwards. <laughs> that's, that's, all this info right here is the fail movement right here. Fail. Just put it right across it. Fail. Uh, you know what? Dude, we can go over all the movements that fail. You know, the Venezuela trying to take out Maduro. Fail. Bay of Pigs. Fail. 
<laughs> the 2000 BLM. Uh oh, it was going good until all of a sudden someone somehow they forgot out that white women nipples taste like Laffy Taffy. Like every brother stopped pro- <laughs> All of a sudden, every brother showed up at protest, but uh, none, none of them had signs. They were just wearing those fake ass x ray glasses you got in the comic books. <laughs> just, they, had, they had bibs and pacifiers on. That's all mm-hmm. they had. That's all uh, they had. Uh, bibs, pacifier, uh, and mouthwash. Aaron, Aaron. I, I I had to ask you if you ain't never saw no porn that you saw some fucking black ass or some some white ass nipples and name of it was on hit. See, you talking to the wrong person here, Jason? Because I take them at any size. Any I like look, man. I like them sometimes to be pointy. I like them sometimes to be flat chested with pointy nipples. I like sometimes to, to be dark, like a black woman that got the nipples the size of silver dollars. I love that. You know, I mean, my shit. I, I mean, I like to see a Chinese, a Japanese woman that has a flat chest but large ass nipples that you could kind of like cut cut glass with. I mean, I like that too. I mean, you know, uh, get me a Vietnamese woman with large, you know, to look like it. You know, if you squeeze, you might have to. You know, catch your eye or something, right? I mean, I take them for me. There, there is no stencil, you know. Look, I had this. She had an inverted nipple, right? You ever seen those? No. So, it looked like a volcano. One of my exes, yeah, it went in, but it was great because you could tell when she turned on because they popped out. So I knew when I was doing my job. That's that's when I knew the words coming out of my mouth. You know, it was just like golden then at that time. Aaron. But like right. I said, man, I take them in all sorts of ways, all colors, all shapes, all sizes, bumps. Sometimes I like them to look like the Rocky, like like the Denver Nuggets logo. You know, going, <laughs> that's what I like it to look like sometimes. You know, I, I don't discriminate. I'm not here to discuss what I do with nipples. <laughs> okay, you just described it. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm going to be the first to say, look, I think one reason I don't discriminate is because, you know, my, my mom my mom wasn't able to breastfeed me, so I think that might be my problem. She wasn't able to breastfeed me. <laughs> yeah. she, she was out of milk. My other sisters drank up all my milk. She your had mom milk. was out of milk. She was. That's what she said. She had no milk. She couldn't what, breastfeed what me. The other sisters, those damn greedy bitches, feet. drank her dry. <laughs> They drank her dry, and I couldn't. I couldn't get no goddamn milk. That's why I got a problem now. That's why I tell my therapist, "Hey, I think I love him because my mom didn't breastfeed me." <laughs> I, 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 I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I got. A, I got pulled over by the police one time and used that as my excuse. I, man, my mom didn't breastfeed me, dog. That's why I'm driving like this, man. You see this girl over here in the seat? Uh, that, that was when I got a four thousand dollar ticket. That's yeah. the story for later. Four thousand dollar driving ticket. Ridiculous. Uh, Aaron, I still got to go back because uh, we've we've already established that you need to relearn yourself on how to say uh, a Vietnamese. Um, so you get a magic moment. This magic moment. For what? Vietnamese. This magic moment. <laughs> Y'all don't know what a magic moment is. A magic moment is, uh, it's a moment we reserve for typically Aaron, but anybody can get it if they get called on it. It's where you misspeak, uh, mispronounce a name, or just speak that real good, ethnic, authentic Ebonics to the point where people wondering what the fuck you're really trying to say. And uh, Magic Johnson just happens to be one of Aaron's favorite athletes of all time, so we give him the magic moment. Magic, um, magic Johnson? Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson? <laughs> Damn, Jason, you said it like he stole one of your women. Yeah, like, 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 when you, like, like all of a sudden, du- DualShock 32 came in and took somebody away from you. Yeah. Magic Johnson at 32? Why, 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 why Magic Johnson? He sounded like Floyd Mayweather when he's talking about uh, who was that mediocre hooper that was sleeping with his ex? Uh, CJ Miles. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. CJ McCollum. No, wait. Was it? No, was he CJ. played for the Warriors. Yeah. Uh, CJ Watson. CJ Watson. That's it. Oh, CJ <laughs> Miles is this fine ass Filipino girl. My bad. Come on, bro. My bad. Look her up if you guys got time. She she got a little too much surgically enhanced. Do she uh, have an Instagram? She, uh, she does. She does. CJ Miles. <laughs> I, I recently, I don't, I want to, re, uh, I been re, want to reach out to George Foreman because the family history said George Foreman. You know, you know, you grew up in Ho- in Houston. And that's where my family's from. And his ass came to the door and said he was hungry. And uh, grandma, great great grandma, gave her gave him a couple pieces of chicken. You know, cause he smelled the shit. You know, yeah, I, I want to reach out and say, hey, me, you owe me some money for this fucking, uh, <laughs> this fucking chicken. <laughs> you going to charge George Foreman for some chicken that your great grandma gave him? <laughs> cheap shit. Sound like litigious. <laughs> 
you know, you said you were having a hard time talking to her about certain things. What in that dynamic then, you know, really, you know, made it resolute that you were going to start this podcast yourself? You know, being with a white person, I think you often have to kind of suppress being black. Like, it's okay that you're black, but just don't complain about the shit that's happening to black people. You know, um, why does it got to be about race all the time? So, mm -hmm. I, you know, want a space where I could really talk about it and dig into things. Um, so I started a podcast, you know, uh, it was a little rocky at first. I kind of just jumped in there, but, uh, over the time, you know, I got a little bit better at it. I got more comfortable on it. Um, so it's been, a it's been a great journey. I've, I've loved doing it and looking forward to doing some more. Okay. And where can people find your show at? Spotify, uh, iTunes, wherever you listen to podcasts, uh, self shoots from the hip. Okay, self shoots from the hip podcast, y'all check it out. Um, if if I knew, if I knew how how, how to like plug in here right now, I'll, I'll send you a a, a a a snippet from my one of my nephews, and his his his, his, his song is called Vincent. You ain't pursuing type, is he? Huh? You gonna send me some shit, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, I gotta garnish some of my wages. No, no he go by he, <laughs> he, he, he go by street knowledge. And, but he got a song called Vincent. You mean he ain't go, he don't go by he don't go by L I L Dual Shock? No, he go by, <laughs> he, he, he go by uh, street knowledge. Jason over here sounded like my uncle trying to tell me about the dudes who make a beast down the block in Stockton, California. Hey, 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 I tell you about this dude named Ventana. Hey. Yeah, Jason, Jason, you sound like you're doing drive-bys via Walker. <laughs> let me let me just tell you about you know his what? music. Hey, hey, bro. If you if you if you, if you heard if you heard my 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 nephew's music, you you didn't know, you'll know it's clean. It's just clean. Some of this shit ain't clean. So I got that <laughs> membership to Bevmo. <laughs> Bevmo. Come on, <laughs> my nigga, shit is tight. Is a, look, look, this Bevmo back open hey. already, baby. All right, all right, this, we gotta keep moving, Jay. This, Jay, we gotta keep moving. Jerry, All just right. keep that same energy, man. Keep that same energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's get into some news topics. Some news topics. So, in news this week, there are bills being passed and pushed in legislation after all these protests, guys. In uh, Louisville, Kentucky, in the municipalities, they, uh, they passed Brianna's Law. Uh, which is there are no longer allowed to be any no-knock warrants. The mayor is going to sign it. City council already approved it unanimously to make it to where they will no longer allow any no-knock warrants in Louisville, mind you. Um, another law that's being passed or that's being pushed in New York is the Amy Cooper Act. If y'all don't remember who Amy Cooper is, she is the uh, dog walking lady who uh, decided to threaten a black man by calling the police on him and then followed through by calling the police on him in hopes of getting him to leave her alone because she had her dog off a leash. Um, that law would make it illegal for false calls uh, to police based on race, gender, and religious appearance. And it would make it a crime if you were to call, make a false accusation against somebody based upon those factors. Um, so yeah, man, uh, what do you guys think about that? I guess I can't beat you to then call the cops and say I could, you did something to me anymore, <laughs> <laughs> it Sucks, I was on a streak there. Yeah, it's already illegal to lay, call the police uh, with like a false report or whatever, that kind of right. thing. Yeah, it is not. Hey, hey I, just a heads up, it is I, not. I, so I, there's a legislation I, saying that you. I, I got to be honest, as oh, a man, Jason. I, I, I got into a, a disagreement with my, my woman last night. I said, "Call the police." I I wanted them to come. I wanted them to come. <laughs> I just realized Jason. Jason might be drinking. That's how I was doing. <laughs> Jason, Jason, hey. we said you was gonna be a fly on the wall, nigga. You over here just <laughs> taking every conversation as the host. <laughs> like we sitting down on the porch in the hot ass heat. I, I bought myself a body cam. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! You bought yourself a body cam to talk to your your wife? This nigga, no, this nigga gonna be like, I, 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 no. I bought myself a body cam. How you gonna buy a body cam, who Jason? I talk to. I feel like you bought a body cam because you started an OnlyFans page. Jason, uh, how the fuck you gonna uh, use a body here. cam when you don't even know here. how to use your goddamn iPhone <laughs> cam? Hey, can your wife can your wife use your body cam right now so we can see? <laughs> yeah, can you, can you have her Bluetooth that to your phone? <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck, Jason. No, Switch body cams right now. It was, it was $100 <laughs> on, on, on Amazon. <laughs> 
It's it says on my chest on my chest on a or a on a, a little <laughs> tank. <laughs> Jason, yeah. Jason, Jason. <laughs> hey, yo, <let's> go. <laughs> we ain't got to fly on the wall. <laughs> yo, on the wall. So, Josh, heads up. Uh, so, I did actually look into that. Um, it is not illegal for some reason to call the cops uh, when it is unjustly or unwarranted, mm-hmm. uh, but they can charge you for the call. So, uh, states and counties can then charge you for whatever response is. So you're on the hook if they seem that, or if it's seemingly that um, it's an unjustifiable call, you got to pay for that shit. So if cops show up, you got to pay per their hourly. You, ambulance show up, you pay per service and per hourly. And uh, yeah, it's crazy. Like, so instead of like making it illegal, they make it so people who are already privileged and make money can pay their way out of that situation oh, okay, okay. Which it's is like a like, fee they yeah, say it's like a fee i'm supposed to get mines i'm supposed to get mines in just a couple of days <laughs> and uh you know amazon you, you know it, the prime ain't working no more you know mm. ain't no prime. i can't wait to have my shit i'm putting on shit <laughs> i'll put this shit on my fucking woman i'll put this shit on her so what states are these legal? Are they uh, <laughs> is it stuff? Hey, I don't give a damn. It, it's available on Amazon. Listen, this nigga here is like, I'm just going to buy a body cam. You know what? That's a fundraiser we start. We start, uh, hey, look, start an organization for black here. men and women that get them body cams. We help fund get to get everyone cam. body cams. And you had that shit on at all times. Yeah. Here in Arizona, <laughs> here in Arizona, you're not allowed to film. Uh, cops. I, I found now this is six hundred dollar fine. Really? You, well, yeah, just out filming the cop. I think it's it's uh, Phoenix area. I don't know if Man. it's Mesa and all the hey, other counties hey, around, hey, but hey, yeah, you, I believe it's a six hundred dollar fine. Do you fish? Field. Do you fish? What? No. Jesus. Hey, somebody got to mute this nigga. I'm going to mute you, Jason. I'm going to call you, Jason. <laughs> Put him on speakerphone. Mute this nigga. He's talking about fishing. Mute him. Jason. Mute him. That was the last strike. Mute him. <laughs> Jason, if you want to if you want to talk again, you go to reactions on the Zoom call and raise your hand, Jason. <laughs> We're talking from now on. Woo. It's like, it's like do you, do you ever caught a bass? <laughs> Yeah, my only thought is just, it's just super early in legislation, right? Because you got city cops, you got county cops, you got state cops. Like, mm-hmm. do they have to follow those rules too? Um, and then you got to think about other uh, law enforcement agencies like the FBI, the ATF, or whatever. Do they have to follow those things? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it's nice that they want to try to do do things as far as like no knock warrants and uh and local legislation. But yeah, it's it's going to have to take a, like a bigger a bigger stage. It's going to have to be like something. They actual. need to start. They need to start starting this in the state. When they write these laws, because they get like Brenda said, it gets tricky. But it it it, it would be easier to inform the 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 call because nine out of ten, when you call the cops over some pettiness, a black man's gonna be involved. <laughs> you know? <laughs> or eight out of ten. Let's give it eight out of ten. I think the only way that is gonna pass in multiple places is something like that has to happen. What happened in Louisville has to happen in other cities because there's no way that shit's gonna happen in a place like LA where you're gonna get no knock. Fuck that, man. You knock on the door. They might get, yeah, they, they're not gonna go into Nickerson Gardens and, and, and knock and ring the doorbell to, to serve that warrant. It's one of those things that's different situations for different, you know, different warrants are serving. Know the warrant you're serving. Are you serving a violent criminal? Who else lives there? Sound like a lot of research wasn't done before that warrant was executed. No, they they put that in there. They put um, I think it's like violent crimes, um, kidnappings. Yeah, um, violent crimes. Child, I don't want them. Yeah, it, 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 they, yeah. They, they did There's some situations where they can't knock, and I I'm not gonna sit here and yeah. act blind, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Justice is not blind. Being, we shouldn't be blind as we go ahead and try to push laws forward. That situation, with, while tragic and sad for what it was, there was a lot that didn't happen, I feel like, in between more than just, uh, it was a lot that happened afterwards and a lot that happened in between, too, that didn't happen in between. There's a lot of due process, and, and, and burden of proof was not, was not met for the cops to give a no-knock warrant to her place for their apartment. No. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe the person they were going after that, that they had arrested in the sting um, that was the actual drug dealer, maybe. Um, but, um, you know, somebody who's an associate of the person, like, 
they could be in the same book club and has the, the, the leader of the book club had all the books mailed to their place and they gave the books to the, gave some books to that person all of a sudden. Gotta, oh, they gotta got know who you in book clubs with. I guess, <laughs> or, you know, so, you know, these Zoom book clubs, man, you might not know who, anybody you in the club with, especially you can just sign up. Anyways, uh, I, I super, I super feel you, Pedro. Uh, Pedro, Pedro's really had in, had on something. I think uh, to really me- affect this type of change, you really need to get on the state bill level uh, of legislation. Um, you, it's going to be really hard to to affect change at the city level, county level. Um, I think I always think about uh, the discrepancies of Portland. Uh, so here in Oregon, it's weed is illegal. Or sorry, weed is legal. Weed is. You do your thing. It's everywhere. I mean, y'all know there's a there's clubs at gas stations. There's weed clubs um, and houses, bro. There's a weed club next to a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> yeah, and it's like it's it's literally everywhere, right? But if you black, it's illegal. Like any like because apparently you're not supposed to be smoking in public. You can't smoke in public. You can't smoke anywhere other than a backyard of a home that you own. Literally, that's the only places. But then your neighbor can call the cops uh, if it travels into their home and they do not want marijuana smoke. So I started looking into it a little bit, and it's just like, who are the people actually getting incarcerated? Well, there's only 1% black people, but yet 45% black people here in Oregon get arrested for marijuana. 45%. It's only 1% black. Literally. Everything is always connected to one color. That's yep. why the whole. That's why the state on. That's why the United States on fire right now. Because yep. they everybody sees it. It's yep. it's us and nobody else. They well, they was blaming the Hispanics for bringing in the drugs and and they uh, blame us for smoking them. <laughs> for real, uh, Joshua. What do you think about these laws? Do you have any takes on on where these laws are heading? Uh, it's not where we want to be, but it's progress. You know, you gotta get started somewhere. And I think with the no knock warrants, like they put in, you know, the clauses for like different levels of crime or whatever. So I think it's a good idea. Um, overall, the like calling the police for someone just basically being there, but they're black. Um, I think that kind of thing can probably pick up steam. Like if it, if it passes one place, other people will see that it's like, hey, it works over here. Let's start doing over uh, where we live. Um, I can see in the next three or four years that being fairly common practice, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and I hope that that's what it becomes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the discrimination using, using a legal form, uh, an illegal Avenue to disc- discriminate doesn't take away the fact that it's discriminatory in, in a way that, you know, you know, we, we are all discerning creatures, but if you're discriminating on somebody based upon your biases mm-hmm. and stereotypes of what they would be doing because they look like that in this setting, um, mm-hmm. And then you use the law or you use the services in an inappropriate manner. I think that should definitely be a crime and it should be adopted more and more holistically throughout our country. But like you said, like it takes time to build up steam and good ideas usually start in one spot and they spread to another. So hopefully, hopefully this does, you know, pick up that momentum. And I'm going to dare to ask Jason, you work the uh, <laughs> switching the bottle with the phone. Jason, uh, <laughs> is he pulling the mic out of his ass? Wait, I just hear a lot of ruffling. What's going on, Jason? You, you doing, Darius? <laughs> What's up, Jason? <laughs> is he breathing? <laughs> Shit. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just here. I mean, I'm, I'm a fly on the wall, like Aaron. Like, Man, did like, you say him take right now? <laughs> he, I'm, you I'm, went, you went into fly flies and land on a a, a butt punch ball. <laughs> you no, spike no, punch no, ball. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm a fly on the wall eating some shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a sound drop. Hey, okay. Jason, can you can you at least put up a picture of yourself? You know how to do that. <laughs> At least put up a picture of a fly. God, why, why, why you want to see me? <laughs> hey, hey, put put up a picture it's of that so receipt. comfortable looking at that avatar. The receipt, the receipt oh, of your body cam. Put up the receipt of your body cam. Why, why, why you want to see me? You, you, you want to touch my nuts? 
Shit. <laughs> 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 now we're having a Zoom orgy. <laughs> hey, Jason, 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 I'm just gonna I'm gonna put this out there, man. You could you right now you are close to challenging uh, certain Hewitt <laughs> for for best fly on the wall award. <laughs> oh man. Set up a poll, Jerry. I need you to set up a poll. I don't Let's know how to do that. We, we need to vote and see what is Jason drinking. Set the poll up, Jerry. <laughs> I'm drinking some vitamin water. Is it some vodka no. water? <laughs> he, he, he drinking that formula fifty vitamin water. He's like, uh, <laughs> I'm drinking that ethanol. I'm drinking that vitamin called ethanol. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> and, I, and I'm smoking uh, uh, American th- uh, American Spirits uh, Ultra Lights. Man, it sounds like you smoke, you're smoking some Paul Mall. <laughs> Man, I feel like I'm smoking that, and I'm just trying to listen right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel, I, I feel so drunk right now. Thank you, Jason. I went to the bar twice today just by talking to you. <laughs> fucking amazing. You know what? I, I, I'll, I'll run. I, I'll run to you, uh, Darius, on a on a fishing pier. I'm sure. <laughs> Oh, my Jesus. All right. Um, in uh, other news, uh, a woman in her 20s in Chicago was the first recipient of a double lung transplant due to the COVID. Apparently, she had damage uh, to her lungs was so uh, bad that it was irreparable and they put her into an induced coma. And so she received two lungs, two brand new, not brand new, but two new lungs because of the scar tissue that had built up and the damage that had been done by coronavirus on her lungs. What y'all think about that? Like, I'm not in the market for gently used uh, lungs, but I suppose it's better than nothing. You know, um, <laughs> but if, like, this is the kind of thing that happens to people that have corona. Um, it makes it a little bit more scary. Like my father was um, diagnosed with COVID um, uh, what, two days ago. Oh no. So it's oh, yeah. uh, pretty fresh for me, you know, um, like he, he feels like he's doing okay, but uh, a lot of people feel like they're doing okay at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, we don't know enough about this disease, unfortunately. And I, it's, it's very serious and, we have to really um, do our part to stay safe. And, you know, like, I, I want to go visit them, but it's like, eh, I can't right now. So, hey, uh, man. This is tough. I, I, I think I, I've been a uh, uh, covert <laughs> since uh, October. Over. Jason, hold on, man. You get a baby, get that Corvid 16 <laughs> out here, baby. <laughs> It sounded hey, hey. like he was talking about playing Cubert. Man, I've been playing Cubert since October 85. I was jumping on all of them towns like them up. Oh, geez. Jason, Jason, hey, you Josh, get this. Oh, hold on. Go uh, ahead. Go ahead. Jason, Give him a magic moment. You get a magic moment. This magic moment. Hey, Josh, man. Feel, feel free, brother. You know what? Really I'll, do, I'll, I'll take a magic moment. But, you know, if you look at the news, the ship been here longer, longer than we thought it was. Yeah, I'm sure I had covert. This magic moment. Jason, what did you have? I don't know what I had. <laughs> this magic moment. We have gone I know, nowhere. I, 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 I know I'm, I'm no. working like a slave. Let's acknowledge this real quick. Really feel free, brother. Uh, it's uh, it's a scary time. Don't know how this is going to move. Um, be safe. You're obviously taking the right precaution. Um, yeah, I had it too. So just throwing out some hope there. I had it too. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't have any uh, uh, history with with uh, health or ailments, so it, it wasn't effective to to knock me out. But it's bro, it's real. It's real. Yeah. I mean, and now I'm dealing with uh, kidney problems and possibly kidney stones and blood clots so it's a it's a real thing man and like uh just yeah be safe as much as like obviously you want to support your spot your pops uh do it from from afar not saying that like you'll get uh infected but you don't even want to add more uh like respiratory anything like if you're even with a small sickness that isn't COVID, it just exacerbates your COVID. um right right a diagnosis so yeah man just be safe for all reasons man Mm -hmm. so here's a little positive good luck to you brother for real Josh, this is a positive story. Uh, my brother-in-law's 
um, respite. He's he's in respite and he has it, and but he didn't show any effects. So and it's it's coming to it's coming close to the end. So yeah, like like Adarius said, be positive. Um, it doesn't hit the same way in everybody. Um, I don't know your father's health, but as as long as you guys keep him quarantined, keep him moving, uh, things will be all right. Yeah, hell of water. I think what happens is a lot of people they go they go flu. Ooh, shit! I got the flu. I got the flu, and they do that for like yeah. four days. And mm-hmm. on the fifth or sixth day, that's when people start to really turn the other corner. But the fact that your your pops is really precautious right now, the fact that you're thinking about it right now, um, it really helps the chances. So, uh, good, you know, good luck to you and your fam, bro. Yeah. Uh, you're in our prayers for real. Yeah, yeah, man. God bless. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, oh, you can turn you can turn you can turn that nigga Jason's mic back on. I just yeah. had to make sure. Well, I was gonna say this. I was gonna say this. Before, wait, please, hold on, Jerry. Please. No, before <laughs> we do that, like, <laughs> everyone say yeah. what you gotta say now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> say I was gonna say that. Uh, Darius, say yeah, yeah. Before you unmute uh, Jason, Darius. Yeah, I, I had some trouble with some blood clots too, man. Them them, yeah. drug, them Jamaican drug dealers around the corner. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna tell you that too. The goddamn blood clots. Uh, they uh, causing me a problem too. Yeah. I know. I, I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Yeah, now, I would never, call, I would never call that Jamaican that live by you in Brooklyn that though. Oh no, <laughs> yeah. no, no, they, no, they'll no. find me skinned. You'll find me skinned if I said that to him. Fuck no. He he, he was more powerful than that Jamaican woman in Belly. He's more I, powerful I, than Jamaican dude in Predator bro. Two with Danny Glover. In Belly, that gang they're talking about, he was a leader. Literally <laughs> in <laughs> Belly, the shower posse, the the gang you're talking about. That my neighbor. A yeah. white lady came up to me and was like, uh, you shouldn't mess with his car and try to park near it. I'm like, why? Mm-hmm. You know, he had all those cones. Don't move his cones. He he why? looked like the type that when he was done eating chicken, you you don't look at the bones when he throw them on the ground. Nah, bro. <laughs> he was next level. He looked he looked like Shabaranks' <laughs> uncle, but with the intensity of general butt naked. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Can the police pull me over? Once I'm naked, I could disappear. Taking shit off his car was driving itself. I mean, the dude had a, a yellow and chrome Hummer. He didn't give a fuck. <laughs> you know what, Jared? If you take off your, your your clothes when the police pull you over, it's because you probably just watching too many episodes of Black Patrol. <laughs> how many episodes? Of, how many episodes of Black Patrol got brother shot because some thick ass white lady got out the car? They're like, oh, it's my turn. Jared, if you took off your clothes while you was getting arrested, they'd be like, "Is that Laura Hernandez from the U.S. <laughs> Come on, man, Laura Hernandez is the gymnastics girl. <laughs> they were like, "Oh man, I thought she went through puberty already." Oh, uh, why did she have her clothes off? <laughs> that shit is hilarious, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on to sports. Sports. Sports news. EA Sports is partnering with Sky Sports for the English Premier League to generate their crowd noise. The English Premier League is coming back into play, as many other soccer leagues uh, in Europe have been, with uh, no fans in attendance. Uh, EA Sports is partnering with Sky Sports TV to produce this, the crowd noise to allow the games to have a more authentic sound to it. Um, they're also making it to where you can switch on the the manufactured sound uh, crowd noise, or you can switch it off and just listen to the play as it is at hand with nobody in the crowds. Uh, what do y'all think about that? How are we gonna do that? Hold on, this nigga taking a piss right now. <laughs> <laughs> you damn right. <laughs> <laughs> this is worse. He's worse than Frank Drebin. This shit's officially off the rails, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, uh, yeah. we, we, I'm looking yeah, at Brandon's face cracking up. We get a certain age. We get a certain. You can't hold that shit. <laughs> hey, Jason, Jason, we, I ain't denying, man. I know. Your man. <laughs> man, this is crazy. Josh, Josh, it's usually not like this, Josh. I probably we got it. We got to keep telling Josh. Josh, <laughs> you don't do it like this, Josh. Oh man, I don't know if I believe you, honest. Josh, I don't even believe myself at this point. Josh. Jason, we, well, Jason, we gonna mute yeah, you until Josh. you done on the toilet and making noise in the background. Oh man, <laughs> come back to come back to Jason in a minute. He's less like a fly than a, a pit bull that just shit on the birthday cake. <laughs> 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 
I can't believe you're a fly with the you're the biggest you're the biggest dick fly I've ever heard. Man. I didn't even know they could pee like that, dog. That's crazy. He got, he got a horse fly over here. Yeah. Fly, yeah, fly, with fly, with man, <laughs> fly with man balls, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, so back to back to EA Sports. Hey, hey so Jared, Jared, on that topic, yo, I heard about that. I thought it was crazy. Um, the the one thing you're missing, bro, is apparently they're talking about. Re- reverberating crowd noises also within the stadium. So not just for the audience, not just for us as users. They're mm-hmm. talking about echoing fake crowd simulated noises for the people who are on the field. And I was just like, man, where are we at in the world right now? Like, yeah. why don't y'all just take a break for a year? This is crazy. <laughs> They're spending more money and research on the simulated crowds than they are COVID response. You feel like, let's just like stop for everything, just for a little bit, for a year, and put all our energy behind saving people of the world just all our energy all of our mm-hmm. dollars like let's just not worry about mls let's just not worry about the olympics let's just see if we can actually like impede on some change here mm-hmm. and everyone's like we got to get our revenue back well like y'all doing it in a way that's not it's not the same it's not going to be the same <coughs> sport and you're going to lose revenue you're going to lose fans either way so like let's just get back to normal somehow fortify yeah. all your fucking efforts like if every big corporation said it was like Let's put more money into PPE. Let's put more money into siloing off our employees and still having the experience. It's like, man, fuck Olive Garden. I don't want to come back to Olive Garden. I don't need to go back to Olive Garden. Everybody is family. That everyone has their own individual booth now at Olive Garden. I don't give a Sorry. shit. Dude. I'd much rather just us get back to normal and like. So yeah, that's my two cents. But I hear you, and it's crazy. Bundesliga has been on for a month now. In Germany, so this already and they already they they went their first week without the crowd noises, and then they they pumped it in through the telecast after that. I don't know how you're gonna be able to turn it on and off. That's the, if you're watching you on TV, listen. they're gonna create two options. It's oh like oh, where, so, oh so, so it's gonna audio, be like the national the national the NC two A national championship yeah it's like, game it's like it's like you putting on subtitles or putting in another language. Uh, yeah. I mean it's it's all right. You know I feel Ladarius on that. Like as far as the interest in like you know for the better men of the world. But I, I think for some people that is part of getting back to normal, right? Mm-hmm. Like, hey man, I gotta give this dude something to do. So I need him to research crowd noise. Right? Like, mm-hmm. like, like, come on, man. Is it that hard? EA, yeah. EA already taped that crowd noise years ago, man. It ain't hard to get it from. Sure, all you gotta do is pay him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, man, let's talk about this, the meat. <laughs> yeah, what do, you, uh, what do you think, Brandon? No, I, I think it's weird. I, I think I would like to hear it both to have the option just no crowd noise and then mm-hmm. see if, if it really does tank viewership, then you could maybe bring in crowd noise, but then to preemptively say, you know, we need this crowd noise. I mean, I guess I, it'd be cool to kind of hear people curse in different languages or, or call it, it, by was, it, 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 was, it was just weird. It was just yeah. quiet. You know what it was? It was just quiet. It was nice to hear, like, the coaches and how much the players communicate to each other. That was yeah. nice. That was a nice touch. Like, wow, I didn't realize soccer – talk that much right to each other and they communicate that much but then it was just like eerie quiet like like a tree fall in a forest type thing look guys they've been doing this uh now that they televised um practices scrimmages um the nba's summer league where they when they i guess they're in orlando right mm. when they do it in orlando there's nobody there but a few scouts and coaches um and the basketball players so it'll be like it would be something similar to that so we have experience. Um, but like Adaria said, now that, you know, trying to get everything back to normal, they, everybody is putting money before research. That's and private money, though. That's private yeah, money. Yeah, none of, none of these people, well, private, the, the private corporations were pretty much run the government. <laughs> so nobody's doing research on how to get everybody completely healthy and get every back, everybody back to normal. So we just got to, I, I mean, just putting crowd noise in, I don't know if it's worth all that trouble. The, the crowd noise seems unnecessary. Um, the only thing I've really seen that I kind of felt needed crowd noise is like wrestling. Um, like it just seems yeah. incorrect <laughs> without the crowd there. <laughs> Everything else is like, is. like, you can live without the crowd, you know? The wrestling is a, is a good a good example. The WrestleMania happened a month and a half ago and they they had no crowd noise and it was just missing a vast component of it. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if how into wrestling you are, but uh, myself and Brandon, you know, are, got pretty into this uh, underground or independent wrestling show in Oakland. And um, 
within that, like just going to it, you saw like kind of the culture of the crowd, like the, you know, the rules of their inner exchange with the wrestlers, the dynamics with the wrestlers, um, and, and just kind of the way you hype up certain moves and certain things that happen, you know, really add to the experience and add to the, the, the theater. And it's a, it's somewhat interactive with the fans. So I, I definitely agree with that sports. One thing they could do is they just like hire a DJ to like stream the crowd noise in and mix in songs, you know, like playing well, underneath the crowd noise. And then you also can like have like some of the chants queued up and you like mix those in. And you just have a DJ who like is a hometown DJ though. So they're going to hype up when things are going well for so your you guys, team. And then, you and then when the team the is struggling. Movie. The German, German, they got, German, they got a DJ sitting in the crown. They got a DJ in no, the it's, crowd. It's though. no DJ. It's no DJ, but that's what happened. Like, it has to hold the chance they would do during the game. The songs would play at yeah. certain times. And then yeah. when something good happened, it went up. They didn't do booing, though. It was, it was, it was a little intricate. Like, somebody had to be in a sound booth doing it. Yeah, I'll be down to just have like a legit show. DJ, kind of like Snoop Dogg at the NHL All Star Game two years ago. <laughs> like, start playing just, some inappropriate music. <laughs> just like, you ready, motherfucker? <laughs> Yo, that was crazy. And he's like, I see. Like, uh, they're like, oh shit. Oh, it was like, oh, open the season, all you hoes and bitches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, yada yada yada. Yeah. <laughs> it's the <laughs> motherfucking <laughs> do double G. Strippers here, Kentucky here, <laughs> we all here, Wildcats, butt naked here. I was like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they invited him to do the was, opening night for was, oh, that's what, I thought that's what you were after. talking about. No, no, no. no, no. no. First, we saw Doris like three years ago in L.A. <laughs> L.A. They had the NHL All-Star game. Snoop yeah. was the host. I'm watching it. It was like the festivity day with all the skill competition. Crowd, Staples Center crowded. They bring him out on like this Zamboni that was a DJ rig. And he's playing music for the whole stadium and everybody's jamming. And he's like, yeah, motherfucker. I'm like, <laughs> it's on NBC at like two o'clock, full of kids. You know, it's the All-Star, so it's full of kids. And, like, and it's just like, yeah, just blaze it up, motherfuckers. And then it, and it, and he just started playing all the inappropriate. He didn't have the strippers, no. And then that's the crazy thing that that happened three years ago. In a year in Kentucky, and a year like, Kansas, Kansas Jayhawks bring his ass in with stripper poles and fake money. Yo, that was so loose. And then he would just like, la da 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 da, bitch. And I was just like, yo. In other sports news, Aaron's favorite sport. Nascoon. I mean NASCAR. Hey, hold, on, hold on, real quick. I don't mean to cut you off, but can we do a new a new segment just real quick called Thirty Seconds with Jason? I just want to yeah, turn yeah, Jason Michael yeah, for thirty seconds. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on. I'm on low energy. I just, just want to see where he's at in life before you move on. <laughs> Jason, like are you there? Though, trying to figure out. My guess is he's asleep. <laughs> I think I took another uh, piss, he didn't move. He in the back. He's asleep. He in the back. Sleep. <laughs> Jason, where are you? 30 seconds of Jason. Uh, we're, we're about Jason. 10 seconds in. Jason. Jason, um, um, mute yourself, Jason. We, we, we want to know if you're around. Jason. 10 more seconds Jason and 30 asleep. seconds with Jason. Jason's <laughs> asleep, man. That's my guess. He fell asleep. And the segment's over. Great, guys. All right, All right, we <laughs> right 30 seconds with Jason was great, y'all. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thirty seconds with Jason. Sponsored by. Do we got any sponsors this week? Sponsored by. What's that coffee you drinking, Darius? Sponsored by that yak. In other news, NASCAR has announced that it is banning all displays of Confederate flags at all its races and properties, effective immediately. This also is coming on the heels of a, a mass exodus of Confederate and uh, uh, former slave trading statues being taken down throughout many states and, and places in America. Uh, what do y'all think about that? Good riddance. <laughs> Good Straight riddance. Up. Straight up. Uh, well, one, it took them long enough. I mean, like, like four years ago, they instituted some language that, that recommended that people not fly them or bring them, but it didn't ban them. So, you know, you still saw them, and you're still going to see that. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a hillbilly sport that I like, too. That take started in North Carolina. Uh, it took Bubba Wallace a lot of balls. I give him all the credit. It took him a lot of balls to call out NASCAR. It took him, uh, you know, he's a half black driver. Uh, it took him a lot of balls to call him out. Uh, he he drove the Black Lives Matter. He had a Black Lives Matter shirt on two weeks ago. For me, I've been I, I could be negative and critical and cynical so much, but I get to a point where it's, I'm just all I can see is positives, and this is one of the positives I see from this time right now. That you know, I lived through the '92 riots in LA. And that shit was all black, man. That shit, or not not just, I mean, there were other races looting too, but that shit was a black battle, right? Whereas this one, I'm seeing, like like I said, the smaller cities, the fact that a, a hick sport like NASCAR did a moment of silence 
for George Floyd before the right before that race. Uh, all the, the last few races they've done, moment of silence. The he can wear a Black Lives Matter shirt. They interview him afterwards. So, you know, he drives a car, Black Lives Matter car. I mean, you know, if that shit would have happened 12 years ago, that shit would have been pelted, right? If that sport could have some growth, then we can definitely have growth in this world. You know, this is a, this is the start of growth. And growth isn't easy. It ain't, and this shit ain't gonna come fast. It ain't gonna come. It ain't gonna look pretty sometimes. And it's gonna go. But it's gonna take a couple step back. But mm-hmm. this was a good start. Say so NASCAR is found with like 48. Started. Officially 48. Right, right. They so were like, racing like, before that in smaller if circuits. It starts back then. You can assume their attitude towards black people, right? Like you could just, mm-hmm. you, you know what's, what's going to be about. And I think it shows progress. Like progress is slow, unfortunately, but it is there. Like y'all remember um, Kyle Larson? You know, he made that slip up and they got rid of him immediately. It's like, eh, we can't have you represent us no more. So I, I think it's a good step in, in the right direction for them. And yeah. I like that other <coughs> companies are trying to do similar things. So it, Progress is slow, but it, it's there. I think that's the thing that the, I want for millennials to understand. Progress isn't fast, right? I mean, like even with think about Darwinism, think about birds, think about, you know, uh, species of birds who change and change what they eat, change what weather they can live in. That shit don't happen overnight. That shit don't even happen with the generation that has to start suffering, right? It goes to generational. It's well, generational change. Let's go through this. We have now we have successful race car drivers that are black. Now, in the beginning, it was grease lightning. All you, you go back, you can even go back to you can use feminism, feminists. When Shirley McDowney, a famous drag, oh, race, yeah, everybody watched the Shirley McDowney movie, it's great. It's how she would go through getting her ass whooped by her husband and staying in the sport and becoming a champion and everything that grew now you see a lot of a lot of women drag races it's like with black people so it started with grease lightning mm-hmm. i recommend that movie also that was with richard pryor mm-hmm. so uh the name i don't know why the name is escaping me right now but he was um he was a race that had all odds against them they were stabbing tires and cutting fuel lines and all this all these things so racism has always been in the sport it's from Anybody trying to break the barrier and you look like us it had a lot of things against them. But when it came to technology, I think Bill Cosby was a good friend of uh, Harold Shelby's, if I'm not mistaken. And that's how Willie T. Ribs got his, his start. He got his his engine. Started taking over. He yeah. got the Buick engines. Yeah, Bill Cosby <laughs> bought him a Buick engine. He bought him a cheap ass <laughs> engine. Mr. Cosby right. needs to go back and spend some fucking more money. <laughs> didn't finish the race because so of that cheap ass engine. Exactly. It Wendell Scott? To, uh, when, yeah, Wendell Scott. So when it, it started to change when they actually, Antron Brown oh, and Lewis Hamilton. Uh, yeah, and Lewis Antron Hamilton Brown. and Antron Brown changed, changed the game completely uh, when it came to race car driving. Nope. So they're starting to see. see Why you say no, Darius? Why you say no? Because I'm waiting. I was going to wait. Go ahead. Nope. I got that history, Ooh. baby. Two guys. Uh, Don Perdom. Oh, you going to call him black? I mean, he's, <laughs> he's mixed, mixed, right? <laughs> he's mixed, but come on, man. Is he, he like logic? <laughs> Here we go with the logic. Calvin <laughs> and, and, and Kenny Bernstein? And Kenny Bernstein. <laughs> aye, 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 aye. You got to start somewhere, man. Uh, you're, you're right, right but you got to start somewhere. You're right, Brian, Doris, but you got <laughs> Brian Gumble looks like a Black Panther next to him. <laughs> you got to uh, Dar- 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 give Lewis Hamilton credit because he dated Nicole Schwesinger. <laughs> and your boy Altron Brown made me believe that I might be able to date one of John Force's daughters. Okay. <laughs> Come on. That's a boy. start. And, and, That's a start. Don Perdon was like the first, like, he, yes, you're right. I'm going to give you props, Pedro. But yes, you're right. He wasn't <laughs> as black of a representative as we could have on the track or on the drag race. But, um, he had a lot of black crew members and a lot of black staff and a lot of black people who were you know, surrounding you're right. him. Right, because it isn't isn't J.R. Todd's dad used to work with uh, Don Perdon, right? Yep. The reason, so the reason yeah. I know this, I'm just gonna jump in just real quick. Uh, my mom is a huge NASCAR fan. When I was about nine or ten, uh, we went to one of the Sears Point races that they had um, held by NASCAR. It was you know because they do Sears Point, but then also yeah. NASCAR sponsors stuff. And uh, man, my, when I was there, my mom was spit on. 
Uh, we didn't even make it into the race. We didn't even make it to go see the race because she got spit on. She was about to fight the dude in the parking lot, and she was crying. She's like, let's just go. He called her a nigger. Um, it, was, it was just some of the worst experience of my life. And I didn't – I just knew for a fact my mom was never going to make it back to NASCAR, but she's a huge fan. That's how I know all these names and all these stories. Every shirt, even some of them with drivers who got Confederate flags on the back of the shirts. She has, like, a whole drawer full of fucking race shirts. And she was never going to go back to NASCAR. So uh, this was the one, to Josh's point, this is the one time where I was like, there, there's some progress being made. And I was, uh, I felt a little different about the world that we lived in because I was for sure my mom was never going to make it back to NASCAR ever. It just wasn't ever going to happen. And now it's at least a possibility. I'm not saying we're going, <laughs> but it's at least a possibility. And I feel a little bit more comfortable. And that is how you progress, even if it's a half step, quarter step. So. so it's funny because I don't know if you guys remember. Uh, I think Bubba Watson is uh, is his car is owned by um, Richard, Richard Petty. Petty, and w- they used to call him the Grand Wizard. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> they yeah. They used yeah. to tease him and call him the Grand. Remember in the nineties, was like yeah. when NASCAR started to get on TV and stuff, and they had started getting more sponsors. I'm like, damn. Yeah, he was a little racist to him, but that's yeah. why I was shocked. I was shocked when he signed him, and then he let him wear his and number. He, he gave and him the then number. He encouraged all of this. Is why I'm I mean, like you said, Darius. This is why I'm like I'm encouraged about, and people can change because this. You know, Richard Petty told him. I was like, "Hey, man, stand up for yourself. Stand up for your people." That's where he got all this from. He said this in interviews last year before all this stuff, you know, got real hot. I think when he won his first first race, he he talked about it. He was on on another podcast talking about uh, how Richard Petty, Richard Petty encouraged him. Mm. But to see stuff like that, you see NASCAR leading actually out there before the NFL. Come on, people, that is crazy. NASCAR took a step, uh, took a stand before the NFL. Well, like, the NFL, look, uh, the NFL just made Juneteenth a national uh, one of the official holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can oh, go to a rookie minute camp on Juneteenth. <laughs> if that company <laughs> makes Juneteenth a national holiday, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Darius, man, you oh are for the mo- most woke company I'm trying ever. to get that. Hey, I got to still work then. I'm trying to get that day off, man. I'm yeah. trying to get that day off. I'm going, man, I'm going to the next baby. union meeting and talk about when we get Juneteenth off. Oh, Just we already out of school? Well, can we get paid for it anyway? It's a, it's a great notion. It's a great notion. Let me, again, progress back to Josh's point. Progress is um, accepted and it is uh, well-deserved and we need it now. But, you know, every Juneteenth, if you gave me a mule and an acre until I died, let's rock with this shit, man. Like, man. let's do this shit. Drop off man, a mule. What? I don't need nobody out to one. Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. I'm talking about every year. Yeah, every year, one year, year, year and one mule. I'm making 40 more. I'm, I'm going to tell you this, man. Hey, now, I know at least five people who windows I'm looking at right now wouldn't know what the fuck to do with the mule. <laughs> uh, I agree. Don't give me no I, mule in the anchor. You give me free health care. You give me free education for my family. It's funny. Right I'm when I said the word mule, Jason came off a mute. He's probably going to talk about fucking Oh, Jason. Yeah, Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason, we want to check back in with you. 30 seconds with Jason. What's up, Jason? What you doing? I'm here. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm going to fly. <laughs> Shit, man. What you sipping on? What you sipping on right now? Your stomach, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you sipping on right now, Jason? Jason, let's get some coffee. <laughs> I, 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 I bet you drinking Jack Daniels. Jason, what you drinking? <laughs> I ain't drinking shit, Aaron. What? Why not? I'm drinking, I'm drinking a beer. I got a beer right here. I I, I got some vitamin water. <laughs> you got that Formula 50? That Formula 50 vitamin water? The 50 cent one? <laughs> no. I, I, I'm, I'm drinking one with, 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 with no sugar. You got that for, Formula 80 proof? <laughs> you got vitamin water, a.k.a. a uh, Vicodin inside of La Croix. <laughs> hey, Jason, you know what? The Darius, I ain't fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> but he is gonna come see your uncle. Jason, I'm so sorry. I'm so so sorry, Jason. I'm so so sorry. Jason, what's up? What you think about NASCAR banning all Confederate flags? I I I, I think they they should ban all that shit. Fuck fuck this shit. You I I be you know to be honest, if they wanna if they, if they wanna if they wanna throw their flags. Throw these flags. I don't give a fuck. 
Nah, nah, you can't do that, Jason, because there's some of them Crips from the, uh, from L.A. going to come, and they're going to be flag-waving, too. Yeah, and they, 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 they be doing your Crip rock that like you, you showed me back in the day. Jason, and, you Aaron did a Crip rock? Aaron showed me the Crip walk. He's an oxer <laughs> doing Crip walk. As I say, go get me fired. Go have me Crip walking out of elementary school. <laughs> he showed you how to Crip walk in the back of an elementary school, dog? <laughs> Hey, hey, he was creep walking. Uh, uh, I asked him what his belly was. He he told me, hey, this is what you do when you belly. Yeah, what the fuck is belly? Belly. When I say belly, Pedro, yeah. what is belly? I'll let Pedro belling, listen. That's, that's when you walk down, you're basically walking down the street. Uh huh. You get your bell on. You get your bell on. You get yeah, that cool that's strut. It's a cool strut. That seems so inefficient <laughs> walking down the street. That's the slowest way to walk down the street. Aaron's a crip. Aaron was crip walking. We might be Aaron past our crip. thirty seconds. That's why. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron been quick, quick walking at, at, at Oxford for fifteen years. What's a what's a quick walk? Make sure. Make sure I was you tag walking. That, make sure you tag when Jason said Aaron was a crip. I no, do not tag that. And get me arrested, please. Please, please no. play that. Okay? I am not Chris. I am. I am not Chris Brown. Yeah, yeah. I heard you was the only now. Chris Brown. I heard you was the only crip that had sex with Orlita. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Can't say that around Pedro. Darn, you know, Pedro, was- Pedro, <laughs> Pedro was the one to hook me up with her. All right, let's get to Cutty Corner Shoutouts. Cutty Corner Shoutouts is a segment we end the show with, and it's an opportunity for everyone to have the floor to talk about something that's bothering them or upsetting them or just, you know, basically just been pissing them off. Or it could be a positive shout-out or something that they want to just recognize. So Cutty Corner Shoutouts, Cutty Corner Shoutouts. It's time. It's time. It's time. Aaron, do you have a Cutty Corner shout out? My Cutty Corner shout out goes out the future. I feel like he brings me more into whiteness than anybody else in this world. More than, you know, he he brings out the inner OJ in me. Um, Because, uh, look, I understand. Look, I'm one of those people that, look, when the young people listen to rap now, I'm 44 years old. When young people listen to rap, I always say, hey, man, go ahead. That's you. I ain't going to hate on too much of it. That's you. I'm not going to be one of these old people that be like, get off my lawn. All right. That's what you guys like. Rap has changed. That's what you guys like. But Future brings something out different. Like, he brings out the, the old 80-year-old white man in me because every time I hear a song, I think it's the same damn song and I can't recognize anything that he is saying. And I grew up listening to rap, and I'm like, what the fuck is he saying? Like, I feel like the, I think every song is the Molly Percocet song. Those are the only words I can make out in all his goddamn songs. So I just take care of his album, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, it's future again. This one, the tone of his voice, it sounds nice. Molly Percocet, Percocet, Molly. And I'm like, hey, how come he didn't say this song? Why? It's a different fucking song. But it sounds exactly the same, and he this motherfucker ain't changed his tone. I can't understand. I think he got a goddamn kindergarten reading level. Right, I work with kindergartners who seem like they got a bigger vocabulary, and this motherfucker mumbling so bad that I think he got the mumps. I don't even think he's a mumble rapper. I think he got mumps. I think it's a difference in the two. He can't. He might got trichinosis or some shit where he might have stuffed on the rusty nail and he can't fucking open his jawline. So maybe my shout out should go to the Atlanta mayor and the healthcare system for not giving that motherfucker a techno shot so he could open his fucking mouth and I can hear the words and know the different thing that was said. So future of the city of Atlanta mayor and health department for not giving out techno shots. Darius, you have a cutty corner shout out? Yeah, man. What's up, y'all? My, uh, my cutty corner shout out this week is going to go to Starbucks. Um, so I am a coffee drinker, avid coffee drinker. And uh, at some point in this week, Starbucks banned Black Lives Matter uh, merch or for their employees to wear anything that insinuated that Black Lives Matter. Then once they started getting the pressure on them, they decided to overturn that decision. And not only 
did they overturn it? They made a shirt for the employees to wear that now says Black Lives Matter. Uh, which you can buy online for twenty nine ninety nine. Which, yeah, which you can buy <laughs> online. <laughs> and and uh, you can do it with the mobile app. All right? <laughs> uh, Starbucks. Yeah, fuck you, Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> let's just talk. Let's. I mean, I don't really want to talk about your business practices, but I will say this, Starbucks. Coffee, originally Ethiopian. Go fuck yourself. That's all I got to say about this argument. If you're going to talk about black people in the way in which we're propelled in this country, we got to talk about all of the experience of black. White people stole coffee from two people from two so first uh a lot of people stole coffee from africans and america keeps uh continuing to steal their beans from africa and some places in honduras but for the most part it's an african connection and uh also you got the french stealing their beans from vietnam so let's talk about that next time we have coffee talk and don't ever talk about black talk unless you're willing to support because we literally made your fucking business Josh, do you have a Cutty Corner shout out? Uh, yeah, I've got two uh, Cutty Corner shout outs. First, I got ready. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Um, first time going there, probably ever. Uh, <laughs> went there this morning. Um, in response to you know Starbucks and their statement, I was just like, eh, I can put my money somewhere else, you know. And second one to uh, high score five ten. Uh, I don't know who does your editing, but they've got their work cut out for them. That goes out to Rockstar Games and PlayStation 5 for re-releasing GTA 5 for the third time. Uh, (laughs) GTA 5 uh, was unveiled with the PlayStation 5 unveiling. They're they're not even working on on GTA 6 just yet. it, it's ridiculous. It, uh, GTA Five, which which is a great game, number one, a great game, does not deserve to two be two consoles released. ago. Two <laughs> consoles. Ago. It was originally on the PlayStation Three. Yeah. It was originally on PlayStation Three. And that was like the big unveil party. They revealed like what the PlayStation Five was gonna look like and say, "Oh, and guess what? We got a special bonus. You're gonna get GTA Five. And I was like, "What are you talking about? They might as well release Super Mario Brothers One again." Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Pedro, do you have a Cutty Corner shout-out? Yeah. Uh, so my Cutty Corner shout-out goes to your boy, Jerry Jones, mm. uh, for not, not having his voice when it, when his um, everything else, he's, he's been talking about everything else, and he's silent. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> She like, are you on that podcast and I'm talking to you? She's like, nigga, I said, clean up. You got your sticky dick ass sitting on the bed. Dude, clean your kinda, dick. Clean your like, dick and go sound, make my dinner. Sound like she about to give out her cutting corner shout out. Pedro in trouble. Yeah, she's like, I got to uh, this nigga on the bed. That's my cutting corner shout out. He over there with, he on the bed with his shoes on. I'm down here cooking and shit. He ain't first, he shit. Was, first, he was in the closet with your sticky dick ass. I said, move, nigga. Now you're in my bedroom having this dumbass conversation. God damn it, move. Mm, shit, Pedro. I know exactly <laughs> what she said. <laughs> yeah, I'm just glad. He, 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 he tried to turn that phone away like yeah, so. yeah, he turned that phone away real quick. <laughs> she probably I know exactly what she said. He threw that headphone down. Don't mute the yourself, talking. Pedro. You gotta Pedro, we can, Pedro, we can see her in the mirror. You better watch out, nigga. No, I, <laughs> Yeah, she probably said. She probably said you. She said you sitting here lying in the bed with your shoes on. You, all you do is just <laughs> shit eat. You don't fuck no more. You don't do this. You probably had a lot to go off of. Like the dumb, get your dumb oh, diabetic man. ass off the bed and go take a walk. Shut <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <was> interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> she gave us her corner corner shout out. It was you. Yeah, uh, where she go somewhere? <laughs> now, uh, Jerry Jones, um, you had all this opportunity to voice your opinion, and all everybody's everybody's talking. Every CEO, every NASCAR speaking out. Uh, you got Mark Cuban. You got all these. Got all these owners. Except uh, even hey, look, uh, what's his name uh, that runs the Knicks? 
James Dolan. 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 James Dolan. Yeah, he right. Told, he said something. He, he, yeah, he, he did. He did. Email. He did. He said we did. Uh, he was one of the first ones. People. I'm gonna just be decent people. <laughs> yes, yeah, he was the first one. And yeah, here he, comes this he country loud mouth. And he said nothing about anything after being the first person that told a lie. Remember that, Jerry Jones? Told a lie. Mm-hmm. 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 We're going to stand up. We're going to respect this flag. It's not about the flag, Jerry Jones. It's about police, police brutality. I know that you love the Dallas Police Department, and they give you a good discount on um, – Securing your stadium, making sure everything is all right around that stadium. But you do know uh, a lot of them pulled out their guns and was shooting niggas. Has been doing it for the last forty, probably last century. And the world has changed. It. You need to wake up and see that. You need you need to be a leader in this as well. Remember Roger Goodell? You always mad at him about something. You always want to speak against him. Hey, now is your chance. Be who you are. You hiding because you know the truth. You know you want your niggas control. You know that. So my um quarter cutty quarter shout out goes to him and my old lady interrupting my cutty quarter shout out. <laughs> <laughs> my cutty corner shout out uh goes out to uh all my woke. Uh, beautiful white people out there, my woke friends, my allies. I can't say how happy I'm, I, I am to see in these last couple of weeks. Well, not happy. I'm not happy about it. I can't really be happy about it. I'm, I'm relieved, I guess you could say, that there are people stepping up. And um, as we know, social media is a bigger format, um, a bigger uh, component of people's lives now. And it's part of their identity in certain ways. It's part of your social identity. Um, and personal, and uh, to see so many people who are not black who are posting things about, um, you know, black rights, these people who are being murdered, saying their name, Black Lives Matter, um, posting things about how we can, you know, help uh, these communities who have been negatively affected by policing um, and other and other legislation, different reforms, defunding the police. Like I've seen a gamut of things, you know, are encouraging and a relief to me. Um, but my cutting corner shout out also goes out to them. Because like a lot of these ideas that I have, I don't want to be that person who's always, you know, conspiracy brother, always talking about, you know, the racial inequities that I see through every little daily microaggression or interaction and how privilege is utilized so many different ways. And and even some of those sometimes the most minuscule, minute ways that we don't even pay attention to and we just have gotten used to or accustomed to that we ignore. Um, and a lot of times I'm, I'm seeing that shit. I'm recognizing it. I'm acknowledging it in my own head, not always able to or feeling as though I should be speaking on it, even though there's times where I want to be that person that does that. I do talk about it a fair amount with people I'm close to and the people that I know, you know, care about me, respect me enough to hear me in that way. But I don't speak on it as much as I could. And that's for my own self-preservation. That's also because I don't want to, you know, push people away because I know a lot of people will engage that privilege and step away and not want to hear me even on other things that might be important in our work environments, our community environments. Um, but the people that are posting all this stuff now, like you're making me feel less woke because now I have an issue where I'm like, shit, I can't post enough on social media. At first, I didn't want to post too much because I want to over and inundate people with shit that's heavy. You know what I'm saying? Shit that's heavy that I got to ruminate on and deal with in my mind. And, and now everyone's posting shit so often every day. I'm like, shit, man, I'm falling behind. And I'm like, am I keeping up with everybody else? Because, you know, my social media mindset and, and, and it's part of my psyche is I like, you got to make sure that you, you know, down for the cause and let people know that you still down for the cause. So my cutty corner shout out goes to all my awakening and woke motherfucking friends out there that are not of uh, our diaspora that are making it difficult for me to feel as though I am actually being woke anymore because y'all are posting all this shit and I, I, I'm just trying to keep up now. And I, I don't think I will be able to. And now I'm questioning whether or not, you know, my blackness is actually as resolute as it once was. I got those numbers up, man. Those are rookie numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sound, sound like you're insecure about your... <laughs> man, <laughs> I'm about to start acting like Dewey from... Uh, from uh, the Boondocks episode where he had that poem at Mo Guns' funeral. Talk about doom sucks like a vacuum. Well, that is our show, my friends. 
this is shade under four hours. We Sorry made about it. Oh my god. god. <laughs> Damn. Oh, oh my god, Jerry, oh. man. I, uh, Jerry, man, next I'm giving you a time. I'm gonna do a brand next time. Hey, week. hey, hold on, hold on. Right. Next time. Joshua, Aaron, thank you for coming. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Real shit, Josh. Thank yeah, you, Josh, bro. Josh, Josh hung out with us and made it. Um, but yeah, so uh, any last words that you would like to say, Josh, you know, to our fans, to your fans. This is what it's all about, you know. Uh, brothers being able to talk about wherever the fuck they want to talk about and, you know, kind of de- de- defying certain stereotypes that are placed on us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. No, nah, and Absolutely. I definitely appreciate you coming on. Uh, we definitely appreciate appreciate you coming on. I've listened to a couple of your episodes and I've heard like, you know, you're talking about issues that are, that are real to yourself and, and real to, you know, components of our community. And I think that's why, you know what I'm saying? I think it was really cool that we were able to reach out and connect from across the country and have you on because part of, part of the work that I, I, I see myself doing, and I think that we're also doing is that we're giving a voice to ourselves that people can identify with. You know, I think it's, it's about building this network of, black podcasts and that black narrative and, and as technology grows this is another avenue for us to continue to expand our narratives as a people so um, definitely appreciate you and want to continue to you know uh, reach out and work out and work with y'all and if you ever want um, us or one of us to come on your show and chat up you know saying for sure we'll be down to do that but um, appreciate you Josh, shout out that podcast again real quick yeah what's your podcast again so shoots from the hip self shoots from the hip and you can find it on all podcast platforms i listen to it on spotify but it's on itunes spotify um but yeah any last words anybody else like to have don't invite jason again it's <laughs> <laughs> my last word <laughs> bruh bruh I, he called me today aaron texted me did you talk to jason you go you, you gonna let him on and i was he like was, no i didn't say you gonna let him on i said what, what's the word yeah i did i asked you i say you could have just been like jason it's probably not good he instead of put it on me he was sober see he called me at like 8 30 9 o'clock in the morning he was sober i didn't think he was you know it wasn't the same jason we got no <laughs> like he was totally like yeah man he was telling me about the he talked about last week's show, how he'd been listening and this and that. I was like, all right, well, we just got to talk to Jared when he wakes up. Oh, Bro, shit. I told him, I said, I said, Jason, I already have Pedro coming on and I have another guest, but you can be a fly on the wall where like we can ask you a question. You can chime in here and there. You know what I'm saying? Something really strikes you, but your whole thing is that you're listening and you know what I'm saying? You don't really talk much. You're, you're more just kind of a fly on the wall. You're able to hear the conversation. Yeah. But anyway, that shit was hilarious, bro. We got bro. some sound drops out of it. <laughs> yeah, you got plenty of that. We got some st- stuttering <laughs> uncle, I mean, stuttering wino uncle. <laughs> sound drops is like... I mean, that's an understatement. Jared might have to drop this whole ep- episode, all right? Like, <laughs> um, Pedro, any last words? Glad to have a day off. My old, yep, my old lady yelling at me during the podcast. <laughs> well, she should be. <laughs> don't get me because I don't make love to her no more. <laughs> she wants somebody. She wants that sticky dick back. That's what she wants. She wants y'all to, to sex it up, fall asleep at your at your at your pew, and just wake up the next day with sticky dick. She wants you to. She wants you to treat the bedroom like a cinnabon. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, that is our show, and uh, <laughs> thank you for thank you for tapping in with us. To all our fans out there, keep riding with us. Um, please uh, continue to tap in, share us with your friends. Uh, once again, special shout out to Joshua Self from the Self Shoots from the Hip podcast on Spotify and iTunes and all other platforms. Thank you for joining us, and uh, hope your dad recovers and is healthy and all that stuff, man. You yeah, know, what I'm saying? Yeah. prayers out to him. Big oh, prayers up, for you know. Yeah, prayers up. Yeah, and everyone else out there, stay healthy. You know what I'm saying? Be good to yourselves. Be good to your to your neighbor. And let's uh, let's uh, keep this uh, positive movement going. But uh, aside from that, we will leave you with this. What happened to you? He had sex with a white girl. That's what. Oh, was it everything oh, I dreamed of? She was, had pink nipples then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Coffee match and drink. Good. Excuse me. So what's your next subject, Jared? Can we move ahead, please? <laughs> Hold on, is Jason gonna unmute himself? I'll just <laughs> just go, 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 keep going, keep going. <laughs> okay, okay. He literally reminded me of my uncle. <laughs> he reminded yeah. you of everybody, uncle. Hour and a half in.
Hey, blame yeah. 66 minutes on Jason. I got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. 66 yeah. of those minutes was hijacked by Jason. Yeah, hijacked by somebody he, he talking. to say something. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Did he unmute himself? No. Oh, there you go. No. Nah. <laughs> no, I, 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 I was I was just being I I I I became myself as being the fly on the wall. <laughs> I like how Jared said, "Did you meet yourself?" I thought you was a nah. fly on shit. No, I said fly eat shit. So I was I was staying in my shit area. All right, all right Jason. No, Jason. I just want to I want to go on Pedro. You know, I got bi I got bi uh, biracial kids. You know, oh, hmm. and they go through a, quite a bit. You know, sure. and they 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 will suffer some 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 deep shit. You know, my son, who's you know from my first, he dark, mm-hmm. even though he biracial. You know, but he's getting shit. The one who's a little most more, more lighter, German, he don't go through this shit. And so it's it's important to teach b- both of them the, of the racism. Cause it's gonna have racism, even though you, you're a black, you're a black boy. I don't give a fuck what color or what shade you are. You should tell you Jason. Know? You should wake him up every morning. Wake him up every morning, like Aaron used to do, Ed, and be like, every morning, every morning, I would pick up Ed back in the day, <laughs> and I was uh, as soon as he answered the phone, I didn't wait for him to say what's up, hi. I just yelled nigga as loud as I could, <laughs> and then. <laughs> And, and then, so one day, one day he was like, "Man, Aaron, you know how it feels to start my day off with you calling me that word?" And I said, "I do it on purpose." I said because once I once you get that out the way, nothing else can hurt you. Jason, I gotta say that was the most important thing you've said all day, and so it may be wise to go ahead and close your phone right now and leave before <laughs> all of the valid statements you've just made go right out the window. Uh, I just you know, want to throw it out there. Hey, Adarius. You're killing it right now. Don't kill it. <laughs> Adarius, meet me at, at any Oakley Pier, and we'll talk. <laughs> uh, is he going to throw me in the water? <laughs> I'm still lost about yes. what's happen. No, y'all go, oh, y'all go oh, fishing. Oh. You go no, fishing. I'm going fishing with cement blocks on my feet. It sounds like <laughs> Jason been trying to get back at my uncles for some bullshit for years. I don't doubt that he would try to kill me or put me in water. I know the truth. <laughs> Jason, Come Jason, on. Jason's still trying to get back from that chestnut tree fiasco. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. That sounds like my, a great story. Dude, Josh, you have no idea. We found out through having a conversation about like my family, Jason's family, that my uncle was messing with Jason's high school sweetheart back in the day. Mm. And Jason wanted to kill one of them. <laughs> and come to find out come it was on, the wrong Darius. Come to find out it was come the on, wrong Darius. one. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to kill the wrong uncle. He tried to kill the wrong uncle. It was the one who was not about that life at all. Come on, Darius. <laughs> Come on, and Darius. Then, and then my grandfather <laughs> saved my uncle's life. So <laughs> please don't throw me in the pier. <laughs> Jason, Jason, was your uh, high school sweetheart a beautiful white woman with uh, laffy taffy nipples? She, she is. My uncle has pictures. With- <laughs> 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 oh, Mr. Mr. Lewis? <laughs> <laughs> oh you motherfucker! Why would you, why would you bring that shit on podcast? That was between us. Hey man, that's not as bad as your dual shock top combo. Yeah, that's, that's the title of the episode, Eskimo Brothers. Right <laughs> if y'all if y'all find me in Antioch, Oakley River, man, maybe Jason had the wrong uncle because he thought maybe they were doing like the uh, whole Earl Thomas and his brother thing. Not so he's, like, know, Jason, he's like, man, both Jason, of them were there. Both of them were there. Jason, Jason's a big dude. I think he was looking for the the comparable uncle. Like Jason's a big black dude. He was looking for the dude who was looking like him. Nah, it was the little one, man. A little weird no. one, man. I, 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 I'm looking for Emmett Timmet. <laughs> Emmett Timmet. <laughs> Emmett Timmet. Ring it up, Jason. Ring it up, Jared. Ring it up. Ring it up. Ring it up. Uh, Jason, <laughs> Jason showed up at Chestnut Street talking about. 
ass niggas in here to make a Tarzan movie. <laughs> Bring him up, man. This we have gone nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. Joshua, I, Joshua, I want to apologize. Usually we are. Yeah, Josh, usually Josh, we, we sorry. are more we all your time on this beautiful Sunday. We're uh, so it's, sorry. It's been a good ride. So. <laughs> Oh, God, no. Where? Oh, Lord. Gosh, right. a, this is, this is, gosh, I was, a cold brother, this is, this is about two steps ahead of the hotel show, Jared. Yeah, yeah. This is. <laughs>